Welcome to Live in the Messiah's Love. I'm your host, Kamisha, and I'm here with my beloved again today. We are so glad to be in season three with you and proceeding forward in God's Warriors AIT, which stands for Advanced Individual Training. Thank you, honey. Advanced Individual Training. So basic training was just getting you acclimated to the entire kingdom understanding how things function and some basic rules so that you can navigate the kingdom successfully. AIT, Advanced Individual Training, is about you and how you fit into that role of the Lord's um, warrior force and his army. One of the big things that is important, not only gaining the skill you need to become better in your job as God's warrior, For us as believers, our internal character, our mindset and our focus is a direct um, catalyst. It's Uh the seed to which your skill comes from. So it's important that we are building your personal internal character as we're going through AIT so that you can function and flourish in your job with the excellence that the Lord did. I'll say demands, <laughs> but, <that's laughs> but he desires yes. that he desires for you. I and mean, we always have the option to not do what God asked us to do. Right. Don't and, recommend and, it, but. And function in excellence, regardless of what capacity you're placed in or wherever role. Wherever the Lord places you. Okay. So today in this episode, we're going to talk about Elisha versus Elijah. But. We're going to stop off before we get into the actual lesson. And I just want to share something with you that the Lord shared with me um, as I was writing this lesson. He said, ministry, it's any service. Basic, that's basically what the word ministry means. It means service. Unto the Lord, yes. Um, and specifically, we're talking about, as you said, my love, unto the Lord. It's an extension of your everyday life. It's who you are, not something you do. It's not something that you put on and take off as though you're living a double life. There's no separation between your personal life and who you are in public. And this is important, particularly in the life and the effectiveness of God's warriors. Sometimes people take the perspective of this is just what I do in front of other people. (laughs) And then when I go home, this is about me. This is when no one's looking or watching I'm okay to, or free to do X, Y, and Z because this is just my own life. Ministry is something that comes out of God's warriors. Now, the lay person may live like that. The person who's not a believer may live like that. But if you're called to do service unto the Lord as his warrior, you have to be the same all the time. Now, and I'll tell you, even in the natural, right? those that are part of these elite forces, even on their days off, they will show up. This is literally on their, being a warrior or one of the elite forces is on their mind 24-7. They're constantly looking at how they can improve or better themselves in the process. And as I was saying, even on their days off, they're going into work still and at least touching the lockers or doing whatever to remind them of who they are and, and what they do as a result of who they are Mm -hmm. and what they're a part of. Amen. Amen. So a double life is equal to having a double mind and it leads to instability. James chapter one, verse eight tells us a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. And that the person, like if you read the verses leading up to verse eight in James chapter one, he's talking about coming by faith, being consistent and being one way versus vacillating back and forth, unable to make a decision or decide on a particular point of, are you going to believe God or not? Mm -hmm. And as we talk about our life, we're not putting on ministry and taking it off. Like some, sometimes people have taken the perspective of I'm performing. So I'm going to put my Jesus hat on. I'm going to put my Christian hat on. Now I'm going to focus and get spiritual and remember all the scriptures that I ever learned that had to deal with this particular topic. And I'm now I'm going to try to barrage them and apply them versus them just being constantly who the Lord asked them to be at all times, regardless of who's there, regardless of where they are, regardless of who else is watching, but they're always 
on um, on watch with the Lord and they're always in their um, position internally and externally as God's warriors. If someone tries to live a double life where they put on ministry and take it off, put on their um, warrior gear, take it off. The adversary will lay in wait for that person with a double life and try to ensnare them in sin. Initially, it'll take place. This ensnaring will take place in their private life. And then the intention is to expose them and shame them publicly or disqualify them from service unto the Lord. Although the person is actually the one who really disqualified themselves. You must be of the God kind of character and nature all the time. So who you are with your family, save some um, parameters of respect in the way of my children. I discipline my children or Uh I show um, intimate affection to my husband. I don't show intimate affection to someone else's (laughs) husband. Aside from those things that honor the Lord, my character should always be the same. I'm the same loving woman of God with my children. I'm the same loving woman of God with my husband. I'm the same loving woman of God with a stranger. I'm the same loving woman of God at the church building. I'm the same loving woman of God at work. Anywhere you go. Anywhere, anytime. With your neighbor as yourself, whether they are believer, other believers and brothers and sisters in the Lord, or someone you've never laid eyes on before. Amen. And I consistency. Glory to God. And I carry the same Holy Spirit access that he has divine access to flow through me no matter where i am what i'm doing who i'm talking to 24 hours a day seven days a week 365 or 66 in a leap year days out of the year right (laughs) amen so but but that consistency is is the key and that's when we understand that and what's required what the lord is expecting and requiring of us right Mm -hmm. then we'll understand the being instant in season and out of season and able mm-hmm. to, as uh, others like Smith Wigglesworth have said, right? Able to minister the Holy Spirit, right? Mm-hmm. Their needs, the people's needs, whatever they need in that moment. Amen. Amen. Okay. So we're going to get into the, the meat and the heart of this lesson, but don't discard that. Let that meditate, um, let, you know, meditate on that. Let it um, sing in your heart. Amen. And um, so what we're going to talk about is a finer point of our character as we are God's warriors and we're developing who we are. So baby, will you read the springboard scripture for us, please? Absolutely. And so for everyone that's following along, our springboard scripture comes out of second Kings chapter two, verse nine, which says when they had crossed over, Elijah said to Elisha, ask what I shall do for you before I am taken from you. And Elisha said, please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. Amen. It's a short, short Mm -hmm. springboard scripture. However, this is key because what we're getting into in this episode is looking at a, a comparing and a contrasting, if you will, of the ministries of Elisha and Elijah. Mm hmm for multiple reasons, but one, many that come into the faith look for, and, and especially that have a, a misconception, a misperception of what being an elite warrior of the Lord is being mm-hmm. you know, his elite warriors in God's army. Amen. Right. They look for power mm-hmm. and how we can utilize that power. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and, and mm-hmm. that's often what is remembered about Elijah's ministry. Mm-hmm. Oh, he called down fire. He was used powerfully. He did all these amazing things. Mm-hmm. But then with Elisha, much of that is forgotten. He wasn't used the same way. Right. Um, so, and I've heard it said that for those that, especially 80s and 90s and, and whatnot, again, I've heard this said that if you, lined up everybody that considered themselves to be Elijah, it would at least wrap around the earth. (laughs) That line would wrap around the entirety of the earth. So, well, I'm not saying they're not here, right? Those people don't have elements and aspects of Elijah and his ministry in them, but it's not what, 
everyone considers it to be, which is focusing on the power. So okay. in this advanced individual mm -hmm. training, where we're going to learn about ourselves in this, right? The Lord's going to teach us about us and what he requires, what he desires for us to be and look like mm -hmm. consistently across the board in our ministry, mm -hmm. in all of our ministries, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to get a, a true understanding and knowledge concerning what he's looking for. Amen. And the short version, the cliff notes, right, is he's looking at love and the love component. Amen. So the we're we're fine tuning our character, right? Amen. We got to get our heart right so that way we <clears throat> we grow up pure in the things of God, and we are all the effective warrior that God wants us to be. But the used warrior, the useful to the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. It it does no point. It does no good to sit there. You got you know you got your battle array on and your gear, but you never get called up for any missions because you can't be trusted to do what's required. Or in the you, way it's required. Or you are deemed a liability to the kingdom. So as we're looking at this, all we want is for the Lord to truly be glorified in our life in the way that he wants to use us, Amen. not the way we think is more important. So each of us has probably read that, that or heard it preached in a message about asking for that double portion. Amen. So let's, let's look at some, um, we're not going to read everything about their individual ministries, but we're going to look at some comparisons. So um, let's go over to first Kings um, chapter 19 and start at first one. Okay. It says, now Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so may the gods do to me and even more if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And he was afraid and arose and ran for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, Is it enough now, O Lord? Take my life, for I am no better than my father's. He lay down and slept under a juniper tree. And behold, there was an angel touching him and said to him, Arise, eat. Then he looked, and behold, there was at his head a bread cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came again a second time and touched him and said, Arise, eat, because the journey is too great for you. So he arose and ate and drank and went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the mountain of God. Okay. So we, if you have studied any time, you know that Elijah had the, the moment on the mountain, Mount Carmel, with the prophets of Baal and, um, and Asherah. Asherah and 450 prophets of Baal, 400 of Asherah. Mm -hmm. And the Lord ministered a miracle there. There was some turning of the hearts of the people back Amen. to God in this, um, in that regard. And that was by, by many it's held as a great performance of mm -hmm. the prophet Elijah. It was a, a, a powerful thing. And then you see the Elijah's response. Um, he got afraid, threw off his servant, forgot himself and, and who his God was and ran away. Um, so go ahead and keep reading um, verses 19 through 18, honey. And oh, again, we're not bad-mouthing Elijah in there, so we're just looking. No, no. We're just it, examining. Exactly. Go ahead, honey. Then he came there to a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the sons of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I alone am left, and they seek my life to take it away. So he said, Go forth and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord was passing by, and a great and strong wind was rending the mountains and breaking in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire 
a sound of gentle blowing. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance to the cave. And behold, a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? Then he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord. The God of hosts, for the sons of Israel, have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I alone am left, and they seek my life to take it away. The Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when you have arrived, you shall anoint Hazel, king over Aram, and Jehu, the son of Nimshi, you shall anoint king over Israel, and Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel, Mahola, you shall anoint as prophet in your place. It shall come about the one who escapes from the sword of Hazel, Hazel, excuse me, Jehu shall put to death. And the one who escapes the word of Jehu, Elisha shall put to death. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal and every mouth that has not kissed him. Amen. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I'm sure we've, we've read about this and you can see Elijah doesn't want to hear from the Lord anymore and, and talk to God in the way of, I'm going to continue to serve you and do your will. He's more focused on himself in this and, um, just his, you know, covering his head, even when he knew the Lord was about to speak again, other than for him to talk and tell God what he wanted God to do. So, okay. Most of the time when we consider the great ministry in the Bible, Elijah's right up there at the top of the list. Mm -hmm. And we consider that, um, you know, he called down fire, he killed the prophets, he did all of these things, but really it was the Lord doing the mighty works. He was just a part of it, just a vessel, but not the catalyst of it. And, but we deem that as the, the ministry that is the epitome of what things should be like, or we want to be like Paul or someone that appears important to us. It seems like they are demonstrating what we think it should look like. Um, Let's read the the power aspect, Mm -hmm. The, the physical demonstrations or the outward miraculous demonstrations of some regard, or even respect because part of this, Elijah thought that they should accept him. Now he thought, he was upset that, and now they want to kill me. Well, they wanted to kill him before, right. but he, he believed that he should now have been approved or accepted in their eyes in some kind of way to the people around him. They were supposed to understand and receive him now and not have this. Now, now that he, well, mm-hmm. demonstrated that God was God, right? Mm-hmm. That, that was the whole, if you will, battle on top of mm-hmm. Mount Carmel, Right. Let's let's find out which one's God. Mm-hmm. The one that calls the the one that answers by fire. Let him be God. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting that his mind's perspective of what was happening wasn't even accurate. It was only the one woman, and she doesn't speak for the entire nation. She said she was going to kill him, not a they. It wasn't the people of Israel rising up hunting him down, and it wasn't the king. It wasn't. It was just this one woman. And that mm-hmm. was disturbing to him just because his mind's perspective was not right. He was looking for something else other than the pan, the plan that God was on. So let's look at one more thing. Second Kings uh, chapter one, verses seven through 16. Well, one more thing about Elijah and then we'll move on. <laughs> uh, chapter one, seven through 16. Yes, please, honey. He said to them, What kind of man was he who came up to meet you and spoke these words to you? And they answered him, It was a hairy man and a, with a leather girdle bound about his loins. And he said, It is Elijah the Tishbite. Then the king sent to him a captain of fifty with his fifty. And he went up to him, and behold, he was sitting on top of the hill. And he said to him, O man of God, the king says, Come down. Elijah replied to the captain of fifty, If I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your fifty. Then the fire came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. So he again sent to him another captain of fifty with his fifty. And he said to him, O man of God, thus says the king, come down quickly. Elijah replied to them, 
If I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your fifty. Then the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. So he again sent the captain of the third fifty with his fifty. When the third captain of fifty went up, he came and bowed down on his knees before Elijah and begged him and said to him, O man of God, please let my life and the lives of these fifty servants of yours be precious in your sight. Behold, fire came down from heaven and consumed the first two captains of fifty with their fifties. But now let my life be precious in your sight. The angel of the Lord said to Elijah, Go down with him. Do not be afraid of him. So he arose and went down with him to the king. Okay, thank you. So that's the one of the famous calling down fire. Mm-hmm. That um, Elijah is typically known for. That he's typically known for, but also understand the there was the angel of the lord that was there correct with him as well directing him Mm -hmm. so it wasn't elijah going this is my my thing to control and command as i want to Mm -hmm. it was as the lord gave um instruction but also the when you when you look back at elijah's ministry it was very much isolated he even in the scriptures that we read before he left his servant somewhere and just ditched him and (laughs) took off by himself. So let's look at um, Elisha. Let's start with 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 23 through 25. It says, Then he went up from there to Bethel. And as he was going up, by the way, young lads came out from the city and mocked him and said to him, Go up, you bald head. Go up, you bald head. When he looked behind him and saw them, He cursed them in the name of the Lord. Then two female bears came out of their woods and tore up 42 lads of their number. He went from there to Mount Carmel, and from there he returned to Samaria. All right, now let's go to 2 Kings chapter 6. And read verses 8 through 23. All right, it says, Now the king of Aram was warring against Israel, and he counseled with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. The man of God sent word to the king of Israel, saying, Beware that you do not pass this place, for the Arameans are coming down there. The king of Israel sent to the place about which the man of God had told him. Thus he warned them, so that he guarded himself there more than once or twice. Now the heart of the king of Aram was enraged over this thing. And he called his servants and said to them, Will you tell me which of us is for the king of Israel? One of his servants said, No, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. So he said, Go and see where he is, that I may send and take him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. He sent horses and chariots and a great army there, and they came by night and surrounded the city. Now when the attendant of the man of God had risen early and gone out, behold, an army with horses and chariots was circling the city. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? So he answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Then Elisha prayed and said, O Lord, I pray, open his eyes, that he may see. And the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. When they came down to him, Elisha prayed to the Lord and said, Strike this people with blindness, I I pray. So he struck them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. Then Elisha said to them, This is not the way, nor is this the city. Follow me, and I will bring to you, or bring you to the man whom you seek. And they brought them to Samaria. When they had come into Samaria, Elisha said, O Lord, open the eyes of these men, that they may see. So the Lord opened their eyes, and they saw, and behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. Then the king of Israel, when he saw them, said to Elisha, My father, shall I kill them? Shall I kill them? He answered, You shall not kill them. Would you kill those you have taken captive with your sword and with your bow? So bread and water 
And so uh, set bread and water before them that they may eat and drink and go to their master. So he prepared a great feast for them. And when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away. And they went to their master. And the marauding bands of our mans did not come again into the land of Israel. Okay. So there are times where the Lord will use you for a certain ministry. Mm-hmm. And the Lord is working through you in spite of you in many occasions. But your heart while these things are going on, do you, are you calloused? You know, for Elijah, we looked at, you know, okay, you got burned up. You know, how are you different than the 50, I mean, the 450 and the 400 prophets of Baal, right? But then Elisha, when we see him coming into his ministry, he started off rough and uh, callous Mm -hmm. like Elijah. But then as he grew, he was more compassionate and caring. And even when he asked for them to be struck with blindness, it wasn't so that you can be blind forever. It was so that he could take them, right, and lead them to the king and solve the problem, which is the answer that the Lord gave him um, that they were facing. But when Elisha asked, really asking of God for a double portion of what Elijah had, God gave him a double portion of love, not a double portion of power. What the appearance he had power, (laughs) but but I mean, power as, as is viewed in the the natural sense, demonstration of it. He didn't burn up twice as many people with fire. Mm -hmm. Right. And you could see as Elisha began his ministry, he was asking, well, where's the God of Elijah? Right. Exactly. And wanting to tap into that, and you saw it with mauling the the kid, the, the lads with bears, um, with the bear <laughs> to get them, and right, just which, that, which the scripture tells us to bless and not curse. That's that says right. Very plainly, he. It didn't say he was directed. That's right. It just says he cursed them in the name of the Lord, mm-hmm. and there was the the fruit. And so, what God is looking for. And, you know, as you compare these ministries, Elisha's ministry, you saw him spending more time with the people around them, him Mm -hmm. helping the people more and growing in the love of God. And this is something that the Lord pointed out because I, up until then, I hadn't even realized it, that when he asked for double, God said, not a double of outward things, Mm -hmm but a double of the love of God coming through. And he did do more miracles. They were just a different kind. And it was more so miracles to help the people. Absolutely. And minister the love of God to them so that they could be improved and bettered and moving on. To pour into the lives of those around him. Exactly. And and in ministry. And I say that because as you pointed out so eloquently, Elijah, Elijah, excuse me, Elijah spent more time by himself. Mm -hmm. There were others around. Right, the Lord said, "Hey, there are seven thousand that haven't bowed their but knee." But they're off in a cave somewhere. Right. He didn't even know about them. He did not even know about them. Where you, you could say, "Oh, it was a different time," but that's neither here nor there. Elisha was used to help minister to the school of the prophets. Yes, mm-hmm. Elijah knew about them clearly, and towards the end of his life, as he's about to get called up, mm-hmm. they knew, they understood, and mm-hmm. they were speaking with Elijah. Right? But they were still at a distance. But there was still a distance in there mm-hmm. on in that relationship. But now when Elisha is now being used in his ministry, they're together. And mm-hmm. he's helping them out and he's pouring into them and teaching them and, and, and helping them grow and develop, mm-hmm. which is a demonstration of love because that does come at great cost and sacrifice. Mm-hmm. So... Understand this, the life, when, when God heard the request for a double portion, he actually lined up Elisha's ministry to look more like the ministry of the Messiah Amen. than the ministry of say Christ's disciples who also wanted to call down fire on the James people, and, right? And John, the because sons of they thunder. were looking at power mm-hmm. versus the heart of God, which is, is why the Lord is having us start here mm-hmm. in this, because as, as we were saying early on, Many times believers and, mm-hmm. and and even those that, that begin going through the God's word, right? Like mm-hmm. They want to be used with power and look at what I can do in the Lord. And, and they feel like they have a call to ministry. That's normally right? where they go. They want to be like Elijah mm-hmm. or, or Paul maybe. Well, well, the Lord is saying, be like me. That's I'm, right. God is love, right? That's and right. So demonstrate his love. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's a, 
to go back to the, oh, at the beginning, right? You were talking about with James, the double mindedness mm-hmm. and, and things of that nature. <clears throat> Understand this, right? Because this, this still applies to us today. Even in the New Testament with John the Baptist, right? Jesus' testimony of him was that he was like Elijah. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing. What did he say that was also prophesied in Isaiah, right? And you find this in Luke 3, but also Isaiah 45, that the crooked paths are going to be made straight, right? Mm-hmm. The, the hills will be brought low and the valleys will be brought up mm-hmm. and to make the crooked paths straight. Mm-hmm. That is not only talking about physical things. Mm-hmm. It's talking about consistency, as we were That's mentioning right. early on. Right. How we are in the Lord should be how we are at all times. That's right. No deviation, no shadow of turning, as is said about the That's Lord, right? right? That, That's right. But consistency, and you see that in Christ's ministry. Mm-hmm. It didn't matter what the situation was, mm-hmm. what was occurring, there was consistency. Now, again, it says John the Baptist came doing no miracles. Mm-hmm. But Jesus' testimony of him was, if you can handle this, he was Elijah, mm-hmm. right? So, and, and even the, the people had to reconcile that with themselves because they, they viewed John the Baptist as a prophet, even though mm-hmm. he came doing no miracles. Mm-hmm. But that also shows you the double-mindedness, the fickleness of human constructs and concepts and qualifications and all these other things because... Mm-hmm. They did not want to acknowledge Jesus, Jesus the Messiah. Yeshua, as the Messiah, That's as right. Christ, right? So, but they, they had already qualified John the Baptist as mm-hmm. a prophet. Mm-hmm. Uh, but here Jesus comes doing all the miracles. All the miracles, <laughs> all, all the revelation them. gifts, all exactly. the, everything. And, and, and clearly they struggled, right? So mm-hmm. it's not about what other people say. It's about who you are with the Lord and and understanding the message of both Elijah and John the Baptist, right, is about, mm. no, let, let's be consistent across the board. That's right. But you see that more demonstrated, as you and, and as we've been talking about here, in the life of Elisha. That's right. Because he's just showing love. He didn't start off that way. Nope. But there was, like all the disciples, right, there is an element and aspect of the Lord's, um, how do I phrase it? He had an expectation that they would grow, that they would mature, that they would develop That's right. to be like him, right? You're not going to be greater than their teacher, but he will be, or their master, but they would be become like. like him. That's that's mm-hmm. the expectation the Lord had, has for all of us as believers. How much more so those that are his elite warriors? Amen. And as you compare Elijah or Elisha to Elijah, they both had someone say they were going to kill them. Now, in mm-hmm. Elisha's case, he truly had a, bunch, a whole nation all but Clearly. come out An to get him. army. Right? And Elijah got a letter from one little lady. And, and, and then had three captains of 50, as we read. And then they were just coming to ask him to come with them. They weren't trying to kill him at that exact moment. And Elisha remembered his God. He mm-hmm. remembered that God was for him, and he was not afraid. Right? He remembered the love that the, his... His father, his heavenly father, his God has for him. And he had confidence and he did not cast it away. Whereas Elijah, over the one letter, because he thought he was going to be received and it was never about him either, right? He forgot his God. He denied the Lord in the sense of, I don't want to hear what you have to say, God. Just tell me what I want to hear. Do what I'm asking and let me go from this. I'm tired of doing this job. And the chariots coming to pick up Elijah wasn't about that God approved of his method, oh. right? Because the Lord was like, fine, do these things and understand this. I, I still had 7,000. But, it, you know, God didn't cast him away, which we appreciate the great mercy of God. But it doesn't mean that because God picked him up, it had anything to do with God condoning what he was saying. It was probably more so proving a point to Jezebel. You ain't killing nobody. Exactly. <laughs> especially not my servant. So he went home still alive, but Elijah, Elisha, I'm sorry, lived out his life and fulfilled his ministry here on the earth. Elijah did not complete his task. He still, even the the assignment that God gave him at the, as the last one mm-hmm. per se, he did not fulfill that. So it, that's a, I'll say a profound statement, but it's something to definitely ponder. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, because we all want to be everyone 
that comes into ministry that desires to right um, mm-hmm. grow in the Lord. Mm-hmm. They all want to be used. But are you fulfilling the the call, the plan, the destiny track, the covenant? And I'll, and I'll, I'll say the destiny track. I think that's the most accurate that the Lord mm-hmm. has set for you. Mm-hmm. Well, that, that's what Jesus said about his man. I've fulfilled all mm-hmm. that you've given me to do. Mm-hmm. So finishing the, the work is important. And you see that expressed multiple times by Jesus in his earthly ministry. And those are the tenets that God is looking for. Humanity, natural carnal eyes that are selfishly motivated might look and say, ooh, that looks pretty. It sparkles like diamonds. It mm-hmm. it looks good like the Jordan. It's all fl- plush and, and watered. Never mind Sodom and Gomorrah is there. Um, right? The natural carnal mind will think that way. But the God mind, the God character sees beyond that. Amen. To the true um, true value. And, and, and I want to say this because we were talking about making the, the 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 hills brought low and the valleys brought up, right? So they're level, right? Mm-hmm. So, and the crooked paths being brought straight, that's not only for those in ministry. Mm-hmm. It is literally for every believer. It cannot be double-minded, right? It, scripture tells us that you cannot drink of both the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons, mm-hmm. right? So, and if you look at any of the 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 revival periods throughout history, and I mean church history, the very first thing that was addressed, and especially in the Hebrides, right, the Welsh Revival in the Hebrides Islands, the very first thing that, that the Lord gave to Evan Roberts was, if you have sin in your life, it's got to go, right? Mm-hmm. So, but that's for the entirety of our lives. Every area and aspect mm-hmm. is, is to repent and to make it level so we can be consistent in the Lord. Mm-hmm. There's no place for that anywhere in the life of a believer, but especially of the Lord's elite warriors. Amen. And we all already understand this, that sin begins in the heart mm-hmm. and then it finds its way outward to actions and demonstrations. But if we can align our heart, we can change that and be that one consistent person. And if you're for the Lord in private, you'll be for the Lord in public. Amen. And And that just comes from his his love. Amen. All right. So we're going to end there for today. Um, Thank you for joining us for this episode. We will see you again next time. God bless you. And remember to live your life in the Messiah's love.